guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have for you a simple tutorial on the laver punch needle. Um, so I wanted to do a tutorial strictly for beginners to explain how uh, to thread this specific needle and explain a little bit about the different sizes that it has and how you can actually uh, punch needle with it. And I will also explain how to prepare a simple wooden embroidery hoop uh, with uh, the monk's cloth and uh, this is just a simple hoop, it's not a special no-slip hoop um, and I'll explain how to prepare it so that it's very suitable to use with a uh, punch needle. Um, I do this to have a, a little uh, knowledge of the needle before you can start with one of my kits. For example, I have this cute kit with this cute plant and I also will have this one. This is a new one and I will make a different video explaining how to punch exactly this design and um, so this would be a sort of intro to that video and um, let's get started shall we? punch needle comes in a little pack like this and it has a handle and three size needles and a piece of iron wire which you can use to thread the needle with. So that looks something like this, just a simple uh, handle and then three size uh, needles. So these are the three sizes there are and the sizes determine which size yarn you can use. So for the largest one, which I use the most, uh, I love using this yarn from Manasel Uruguay. Um, it's a wool silk blend and this size is perfect for the larger needle. And this is a size uh, with US needle for four and a half. And you can also use, uh, for example, this uh, cotton that I have. It's uh, probably about the same size as uh, the wool blend and then if you want to go to the middle size so the second option then I uh, like to use this one this is actually almost the same kind of yarn uh, except that it's a smaller size and it's called Fino and this would be a size uh, 2 to 4 uh, US needle and then the smallest one you can use uh, with embroidery floss, but I don't really have embroidery floss, so I've not tried it before, but you um, can see by this that you can really make a lot of detail with this needle. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Before using this needle, I actually only used the Oxford uh, regular punch needle and the adjustable punch needle, which is really great because you can get such lovely chunky textures and you can make projects really fast and I love making them, especially for pillows and so on. Uh, but I was looking to make more detail in pieces, so that's how I came across the level punch needle and I really love it. The only thing I don't like about it is that it's, uh, the handle is made from uh, plastic and not wood. You can't really see it because it's brown, it's very smart. Uh, but other than that, it's a really solid needle and I've used it a lot. I've not been able to break it and um, I'm really happy with it. So. A uh, good tip if you want to start making more details, like for example uh, these smaller pieces, like the kits I show you, 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 yeah, you get really lovely uh, intricate details with this needle. First let me show you how to thread the needle and then I'll uh, show you how to best prepare the embroidery hoop. For the purpose of this video, I'll show you how to use the uh, largest needle of the three. So I'll put these two aside. And, um, well, it's really simple. First we start by um, unscrewing this one a little bit, not too far. And then uh, we put the uh, end of it in here. This is going to be the tip of your needle. So this end goes in here and then you can close the wheel on the side again and yeah as you can see because of this we can adjust the length of uh, this piece so 
if we want, we can make it a lot smaller, like this. And this length is going to decide how long the loops are going to be. So I'll show you later exactly what this means. Uh, for now, I'm going to make them um, middle length, so just simple, uh, regular length like this. So now we want to get yarn inside this channel. This will use the piece of iron wire that comes with this kit. And I'm trying to make as less of these kinks in them as possible. So rotate it a little bit. And just it takes a little bit of effort. And then you get this one long piece and then I folded it in half like this. So now you get this tip with the loop on the, on the top. We have to make sure that this one is quite small because it has to fit through the channel of the needle. So this, yeah, the first time it takes a little bit of time. So now we put it all the way through just push it through all the way to the end until it comes out on the other side like this and then we make a little loop so we've got our loop right here and we'll put the yarn through it like this and then we can just pull it through on the other end you have to use a little bit of force and then you want also so now the yarn is completely through on both sides but you still have to thread the tip of the needle as well we've got the tip and we want the tip of the yarn to go through so we put it in here like this and then we can pull it out the other end. So it's important to thread it from the same side as where the yarn came out. So on this side is where the yarn comes out. Now you can pull on the yarn a bit to make this tail shorter and now your needle is ready to go. About the hoop, uh, this is a simple wooden hoop. It's not a no-slip hoop, but I've noticed that this works fine. So I've seen a lot of uh, no-slip hoops in the punch needle world and I'm sure they are lovely, uh, but I've not felt the need to use them actually. So I unscrew the top right here, a little bit more, and then I'll use the cloth. So I'm using monk's cloth right now. Um, I think this is the best cloth to start with as a uh, beginner. So this is um, a Panama cotton and as you might be able to see, it's a even weave fabric and um, yeah, it's got uh, double threads on each side and it's also got all these holes and it's actually quite thick, it's quite firm and it's really suitable uh, to use with a punch needle. Uh, you also have a different um, type which has these lines on them every four centimeters and that's also very nice to work with. It helps you to stay on track of a pattern for example but it's not really, really suitable if you want to have uh, a design with some uh, negative space around it because then you would see all these lines. So I uh, particularly like this fabric. Uh, one thing about monk's cloth is that it unravels really easily. So if you work with it, I suggest you either hem stitch around it um, or you can go the easy route and that's just uh, tape around the edges, which I've done here, just simple uh, tape that I use to uh, paint 
I don't know exactly the, the English word for it, but uh, yeah, you stick it on both sides, so you fold it around it, and then it works perfectly. And um, you can easily work with this material now. So we've got our inner hoop, which I have right here, and our outer ring. So we put the cloth over the inner ring. Make sure that the uh, ring is in the middle. And then you put this one over. Make sure it's unscrewed so it fits. And then what I like to do is, well, this uh, fabric has a vertical and horizontal lines to make sure that they are not in uh, rotated but the vertical lines uh, correspond with the top of your hoop and uh, because I think it looks more neat and then I will start by uh, screwing the top closed just a little bit with my hands and then I will go all the way around the hoop like this and pull on it while holding onto the hoop as well and then I start stretching out the fabric all the way around and this is just the first time and it's still very loose so you can easily make sure that it's quite tight already and then screw it closed a little more and then I'll use this pliers you can also use a screwdriver but it has a flat top like this so I like using this one and then I'll start um, screwing it more closed with this one and that's to well help with more tension so I would do it a few times and then I repeat the process so I can still I hold on to it because if you don't you might yeah, pull off the outer ring so I hold on to it and then I pull on it with my other hand and I really try to tighten the fabric more so I go all the way around like this and pull on it and make sure that the ring yeah, stays in the middle of the fabric like this all the way around all the way around and as tight as you can so now as you can hear it's as tight as a drum and that's what we want so now it's time to completely screw it as hard as you can and when you do it like this with a pliers or a screwdriver then the fabric won't come loose if you do it right. So make sure it's really, really tight. And there you go. That's it. All right, so let's talk about punishing. Um, first of all, we've got our hoop and we've got our needle so what we do we start by putting in the needle we move our tail to the back uh, so this is where it comes out on this side and we put that side on the back and we just push the needle through you don't have to look where the holes are just push it through somewhere it doesn't matter and what I'd like to do is take out the tail on this side uh, so you already have the tail on the back of your piece and then I pull it a little bit on this side to make sure the tail is not too long because we don't want to waste yarn so now what we do uh, we pull it up until the needle comes out and we don't stop touching the fabric we still we touch the fabric right here and we move a little bit and we push it back down. So on the back side, you are now making a loop. You go on and you push it back down. Um, so this is really the basics. So let me show you up close. I'm coming up. I'm moving a little bit. I push it back down. I come up while touching the fabric move it a little bit and I go up and up so 
that's really simple, right? Uh, so now I'm going back um, and what I like to do is I like to lay bricks. So that means that I come up, I've turned my needle around because I always want the tip of the needle facing in the direction that I'm going and then I'm going to go in halfway uh, at the halfway point of the last stitch. So I'm coming up and going in at the halfway point and I'm going to go close to the edge the previous stitch so by doing it this way I'm making sure that the area gets filled up really nicely so as you can see here this whole area is filled up nicely and evenly and on the back also um, the loops are evenly divided so if you do it otherwise you will get rows and now oh, they look pretty cute to me and the fun thing about punch needles you can actually use both sides so this side is the, the flat stitch you can fill up an area, color an area, it's almost like painting uh, this way or you can use this side and then you've got this lovely hoops and texture really cool that you have different options available and different kind of textures so you can also put different textures in one piece so you can do an area with the flat stitch and then you turn around and do an area uh, from this side so you get the loops on the front and yeah, you can get a really interesting uh, piece of art that way. So when you finished an area like this, then you can go to the back while pushing the needle through, keeping it pushed in. Uh, you can cut off this part that is attached to the needle. So I do it right at the top and I just cut her off like that. Make sure it's really loose and then you can take out the needle and basically that's it your area is done and if you want you can cut these tails to fit the size of the loops and yeah everything looks neat this is basically the, the basic thing you have to know about punch needle but of course you can do more so with this needle which is really fun is that you can make different height loops by adjusting this needle uh, in length so you can open up this and then take the needle out a little bit make sure that the needle is pushed in far enough so you can still close it off with this wheel, so it's in correctly. So now I'm going to punch just a little bit more and next to the other one so you can see the difference. So I'll punch in right here and then I'll go on, punch, punch, like this. So always punch all the way to the end so that the handle is touching the fabric and make sure you always turn the needle when moving across the fabric. One really important thing to remember while punching is the yarn that comes out of your needle and is attached to your ball of yarn. It has to slide through the needle uh, really easily to make these loops on the other side and when it's not possible to go through for example when you put your arm on here and you're punching then the yarn can go through and what happens basically is that you start pulling out the previous stitches like this and that's because you are basically grabbing onto it while you're moving on with your needle and yeah that's not working so it's always very important 
and this is actually really quite sensitive so the yarn always has to be able to move freely through this channel so you always have to have slack so even when you have a ball of yarn and well the yarn is still curled up in the ball then it won't work it, you really have to take out some of the yarn and make sure that it always has slack and that you're not leaning on it that's very important and when you do that and then everything should work fine so now let's see on the other side so these loops are quite a bit longer than these and this is also really fun because now you can make different kind of heights of loops in one piece and give it some extra texture uh, which is really cool you can also make shorter loops so by adjusting the needle and making this piece shorter not too short because if you do it too short it won't work the loops will come out but I think about this size is still possible and um, yeah then you make shorter loops so it's easily adjustable with this needle and I really love that what I also wanted to show you that if you punch and you feel like you've made a mistake you can easily frog it frogging it's called pull it out like this till the point you want to correct then pull on the yarn on this end until you're back to touching the fabric and then you can just start over and that's why monk's cloth is really ideal because this fabric is really forgiving so when you pull it out like this you might have some holes here and you can easily by scratching it a little bit remove these holes and it will look yeah, almost the same. There are some other fabrics you can use like linen or a burlap or linen scrim and these work really well but when it comes to frogging they are less suitable so that's why I think a monk's cloth is the best for beginners. For punch needle as you can see it's quite easy uh, to pull out stitches especially when you make the loops this short but when you fill up an entire area then uh, you can still when you specifically start to grab something and pull on it then it goes out but basically all the stitches together hold each other in place so it's actually really quite sturdy and yeah it works really well so guys that was it for this video i really hope you enjoyed it and that you had fun and that you learned something but if anything is unclear then don't hesitate just write it down in the comments and i'll try to help you as best as i can please leave a thumbs up if you like the video and that really helps me and subscribe to my channel if you want to get notified for new videos it's free so what are you waiting for now i'm going to make a video for the Pilea kit um, so we're going to use everything we just learned about the needle and put it into action and i've also made a kit uh, for this plant and then you get everything you need uh, to make this project so check it out in my shop and i hope to see you next time